You say there's good news. Well, I don't. Wages. Yes, I don't always like to come on here and give you bad news. Okay. So I, at least I have <laughs> at least I have some facts that allow me to give you some good news that really hasn't gotten a lot of attention. Okay. And and to your point, it may not be permanent, but here it is for now. So let's look at what's been happening to the people closer to the bottom. And we've talked an awful lot on the show about income inequality, about growing income inequality. And what you can see on this chart is that for the first several years after the great financial crisis. People at the bottom, those are the, that's the red line, mm -hmm. in terms of wage increases, did substantially worse than everybody else. And so they were falling further and further behind relative to people of higher incomes. Income inequality was widening. And then toward the end of 2015, an interesting thing started to happen, which is that people at the bottom started to do better. And you can see the red line crossed those other lines, which are all the other income levels, mm -hmm. and started to do better. Why did it do better? It did better in part because it took us 92 months, but we finally, in that time period, got back to the 5% employment we had enjoyed before the great financial crisis. Mm -hmm. And when there are fewer jobs available, uh, wages uh, tend, tend to go, uh, sorry, when there are more jobs available, wages, wages go up. They have to, employers have to pay more to get people to do that. And then the pandemic hit, and there was an immediate hurt to everybody, including people at the bottom. But then as the economy reopened and you had huge amounts of stimulus going into the economy, the demand for workers went up and wages went up. You saw a lot of increases in minimum wages and if you drove by a lot of fast food restaurants or advertising for people for 15 or $16 an hour. And so people started to benefit from this, what we could call running the economy hot, when you're running the economy at a low unemployment rate, like three and a half percent. And I'll give you another fact, which was that uh, a few years ago, and in normal times, you have more job openings than there are workers. Right. Today, you have far more job openings than you have workers, and so the, the, uh, so the wages that people have to pay do get bid up. So these p positive swings, positive adjustments in the economy, are they circumstantial, or are there any policies that actually helped promote something positive happening toward equality and wage growth? So certainly running uh, progressive policies where the benefits are shared more by people at the bottom helps. Running, as I said, the economy close to full employment, but hopefully not creating inflation, helps. But let's take a look also at what happened to wealth during the pandemic, because the government does play a big role in this. And this is a chart of wealth. We were talking about income, now we're talking about wealth. And so in, in just three years, from 2019 to 2022, right in the heart of the pandemic, mm -hmm. you can see that wealth of the people in the bottom 50% of the country went up by 125%, it more than doubled. And you can see in comparison, wealth for every other income group, including at the very top, went up by much smaller percentages. Obviously, the dollars are very different. But in terms of dramatically changing the fortunes of people at the bottom, we did have a big impact. And what had that impact? Some of it was appreciation in real estate. A lot of uh, people's assets down, further down are in real estate, which has been appreciating. Talk about whether it might continue to, but so far it has done very well. House prices were up 75% for people at the bottom. Right. But then the next thing that happened was we put an enormous amount of stimulus back into the economy, and that put cash into people's bank accounts. And if you put that chart back up for one more second, you can see that on the right side of that chart, what happened to the average bank balance of someone in that bottom 50%. You can see it was sitting at about $1,500, less than, well less than $2,000, and it jumped up to over $4,000. And those are the stimulus payments, those are the unemployment payments, those are all the other benefits that we put in place. And so for the first time, people had some degree of economic right, security right. that they didn't have before, thanks to our government policies. And you say it's not all good news. Despite improvement, the U.S. remains vastly unequal. And I'll just add to that the question, the potential for a recession still looms? Sure, both are true. Let's talk about income inequality, which even with the improvement stands at unbelievably low levels. Uh, in terms of income, the bottom 50% has 11, gets 11% 11 of the total income, so obviously way best than its share worse than a share. But when you look at wealth, it's even right. more dramatic. The bottom 50% holds, holds only 3.3% of the wealth in this country. And uh, amazingly enough, if you go back to 2011, that bottom 50% only held 0.3% of the nation's wealth. So it has improved a lot, but it, it still has a long way to go. Steve Ratner with the charts. Thank you so much. We appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks Steve. for coming in. It's great to see you. And